What's up everyone, Danny Lyndon back with another video. Today we are going to go on OBS Studio and I'm going to teach you how to make your voice sound amazing. Even if you're not doing this on OBS, follow along and this will still help you out big time as far as figuring out how to make a great sounding voiceover chain to really improve the and clean up the quality of your audio. Make sure you're listening on a good set of headphones because if you're on some cheap laptop, TV, or phone speaker, everything's going to sound like crap. So get on a good set of headphones and let's get started. We're going to go over the three absolute must-have plugins and then three bonus ones that will really take it up to the next level. The effects that are built into OBS Studio or your editing software where usually do the job, but they're not as good as these. So the first thing we want to do is grab the free waves plugin called Studio Rack and load that onto OBS. Once you have that plugin set up, you can add all your other Waves plugins to this. So if you do want to use Waves plugins on OBS Studio, you have to have the Studio Rack, which is free. The first two plugins are for people recording in noisy rooms. We have a noise reducer and a de-reverber. If you're not interested in those, go ahead and skip past those two, but I highly suggest you watch the rest of the video. I'll go ahead and add chapters so you can skip to the parts you want to see. Now, OBS Studio has a built-in noise suppression setting, and if you turn that on, it does degrade the quality of your audio just a little bit. So what I use is Clarity VX, a noise suppression tool which recognizes the difference between background noise and your voice. There is a pro version of this as well. Most of us that just have a fan or an air conditioner running in the background, we can just open this plugin, we can grab this big old knob, set it to about 50 percent so all you got to do is load that one on there crank that dial to about 50 percent and bam most of the background noise is gone or heavily reduced down to where you can barely tell it's there the next plugin is optional this is the clarity vxd reverb if you're in a room that has a lot of reverb or natural echoes coming back into the microphone this will cut out 98% of that, depending on how bad the room is. There's a regular version and a pro version of the Clarity VXD Reverb. The regular version's nice, but if you want to get rid of that last little bit of reverb, I think the pro version works way better. So basically, this is how I set this up. Let's go and turn it on, and you're going to notice if there was any reverb, it probably disappeared. So what I usually do is I put it on Dialog 1. I set this to double slash stereo. I come over here and I turn it on to auto. That seems to give it a little bit nicer sound. Strength multiplier, I move that from 1.0 up to 2.5. The tail smoothing, I do around 30 milliseconds. That just seems to make it sound just a little bit better. The limiter, I usually turn that on, and then I crank this big old knob up to either 50 or 60%. Now, if that's not getting out rid of enough reverb, what I would do is just take this one here, crank this up to around 140%, and bring that over, and that's going to get rid of the majority of the reverb in the room. If it's, if it's working on flat, you don't have to mess with it. Now, you can take these controls and then hit this little button that says Difference, and when I hit Difference, you're only going to hear what's being removed. So let me do that for a second. Now you're only hearing the sounds that are going to be removed, and you can move these around. So basically when you do that, you can move these around to find where the worst of the reverb is and just boost the little bands where the reverb is the worst to get rid of it. So that takes a little bit of playing around with. So Clarity VX D-Reverb Pro, amazing. The next plugin I use is a de -esser. This is one some people will need and some people won't, but when you say S sounds like Celly Cell Seashells, those S sounds can be very strong, very harsh, very shrill. This will suppress the S sounds. Now you don't want to remove them because that would sound very unnatural. So generally what I do for this one is I move the band mode over here. I put that on wide. I put the detection on around 60%. I bring the range down to about 14 to 17. Somewhere around 17 is usually pretty good. You're gonna see up here these little yellow things moving around. So every time that line dips down, it's suppressing an S or when you say it sounds like language, the ch, it's really knocking those out and making them so they're not sounding as harsh or as bad. So what I do is once I have all this other stuff set is I grab this big wheel and I just kind of turn and say, Selly sells seashells, Selly sells seashells, Selly sells seashells. And I pull that down until I see this thing coming just a little bit below the line. And that should be suppressing our S's big time. And that's going to give your listeners a much better listening experience. If you don't have a problem with sibilance, you probably don't need this. But some people have really bad sibilance. And when they say an S, it is ear piercings. What's really interesting about wave sibilance is it should be able to detect the S sounds compared to your normal speaking voice. So most de it just grabs a whole bunch of stuff and suppresses it down. 
This one should not be getting anything but the harsher S sounds and leaving your normal voice untouched. The next plugin we're going to run is a compressor. This is an absolute must. Everybody needs to be running a compressor on all of their videos. What the compressor does is when you start getting a little bit too loud or louder, it'll automatically turn the volume down and bring the, the quieter and the louder parts closer together, which can give your listeners a much better listening experience. Now in our normal speaking voice, we only want it to start kicking in just slightly. So the first First thing I'm going to do is come over where it says analog. I'm going to click that on the 60 hertz. This little switch right here says limit or compress. Make sure you put that on compress. The gain knob, that's just a overall volume adjustment. I would just leave that where it is for now. The little thing down here that says high frequency, make sure that's on 100. The mix all the way up to 100. Leave the trim on about 50% there, or zero, I should say. Next, we have a UV display knob. Make sure that's on GR for gain reduction. And now all we have to do to dial this in is grab this little knob right here and we're going to start moving this up. And once we see this little needle here start to kick, we know the compressor is starting to work. Now for our normal speaking voice, we barely want to see that kick. Hello, hello, hello. It's not working yet. Check, check, check. Hello. So right there, we see the compressor is just starting to kick in, which means it's barely working on our speaking voice. But if I get really loud and say, hey, does it really just turn that volume down so I didn't blow out your ears? Now, if I crank this up more, I can add some more compression. Right now, we're getting two to three decibels. Some people like the sound of that. Some people don't. If you turn it up too much, it's really going to start over compressing. I'm probably not as loud now, but I like to get just about, you know, one to two decibels of compression during my speaking voice. And then when I get loud, your listeners will really appreciate it. So that's how you set up this super easy compressor. Most compressors have all kinds of controls that can be very confusing. This one is just very good and very simple. The next plugin we're going to run is an equalizer and we're using the Waves Q10 equalizer. This one's just very simple, very easy to use. It's very affordable. It's just a nice EQ. So what, what the point of an EQ is, is to get rid of bad room frequencies and or just shape the sound into what you want. The first thing I always do is I add a bass cutoff to get rid of the lower bass frequencies that are deeper than the human voice. That way if there's any room rumbles or your air conditioner's running, you don't hear like a brrrr in the background annoying your listeners. So always cut off the bass around 60 to 80 hertz. Now your EQ is going to be different than mine. You have to EQ according to your voice your room and your microphone. So everybody's EQ is gonna be set up differently. The EQ will shape the sound into the way you want your microphone to sound. It's not really designed to where you should be trying to change the microphone, but if you got too much bass or not enough bass, you can boost that or lower it. If you got a little bit too much treble, you need a little more mids, you can just kind of gently shape that into the sound you want. The right. next plugin we're gonna run is a limiter. This is the last one and this is a must have. The limiter will get your, your recording to the proper volume. Now I'm using the Waves WLM Plus limiter. This one is actually made just for content creators. Like if you click on the settings, you're gonna see this whole list. You got like Netflix, you got YouTube, you've got Amazon Music, you got Spotify, you got settings for all these different things. And this one is actually designed to help you get your your volume of your recording or your video or your music just to the proper level for whatever thing you're trying to upload it on. Since I'm doing YouTube, I'm simply going to go ahead and select the YouTube setting. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make sure the true peak limiter is turned on. And I'm going to watch this little green bar that says true peak. If it's not hitting this little yellow thing right here, I'm just simply going to grab this and I'm going to slide this over to the right until it's just barely hitting that bar. Now I'm not gonna do that right now because that's gonna make the recording much, much louder. I like to record at a low volume and then when I put my video on the editing software, that's when I turn it up and get it up to the full volume. Now, if I'm live streaming, I'm going to push the volume to the max. I'm going to adjust that bar and get that as loud as possible. And the cool thing is you can do that with a limiter. If your volume goes way off the bar, you will clip and distort. The limiter is basically like a very, very strong compressor. So once you start to get too loud, it'll really just squish that down so it won't clip and distort. It'll basically save your recording. Now, I will be making some more videos on each one of these plugins and i'm also going to put this on a playlist so this will be my voiceover chain playlist we'll have this video and then every time i make a new video that shows how to set up one of these particular plugins that i'm showing you here 
I will put that on the playlist. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll be doing an individual video for each one of these just so we can go into more details. But bottom line is I like Waves plugins because number one, they're usually inexpensive. They often have these sales. They're constantly having like buy two, get one free or buy three, get two free or something like that. So sometimes you can go out and buy two of these things or three of these things and get like extra ones for free, which really reduce the cost. I mean, you can go over to the Waves website and get a lot of these plugins anywhere between like 10 and $30. They do have a few that are expensive, but most of them are pretty affordable. So make sure you check out the link in the video's description and in the pinned comment. That's going to have some links to the Waves website. If you buy something off the link, I will get a small commission, which helps the channel. But anyways, thanks for watching. You guys are amazing. Lightning out. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it helped. See ya.